If you're a beginner and you've always wondered how to put a little crowd of people in your street scenes or your paintings in general, well, I've got the answer for you today. This is part of my online watercolor school. This is actually one of the bonus lessons I've got in there. So check it out and don't fall into the common traps that people fall into when they're painting figures. So here it is, have a look. We're not talking portraits. We're not even talking kind of semi close-ups. We're talking just a crowd of people in the middle distance. A simplified way of painting these people. Now the important thing is first is to get the perspective right. If you look at me and where my eye level is, where my head is, and you look at people that are way in the background there, you'll see that we're kind of roughly at the same height. What changes is where our feet are. So the closer someone is, the further down their feet go in the picture plane. The further back they are, the smaller the person is, but the heads remain not exactly the same because we're all different heights. I'm six foot three, but it's in a range. So that's how we actually make sure that we get that sense of depth. So we've got to do that first. So I'm back here in Australia now, and I just want to reiterate some of the things that I said back in Croatia about painting figures. Again, I'm not talking about painting people with a lot of detail like these people here. It's not, not that they're portraits, but you can see features and shoes, etc., etc. I'm, I'm not talking about that at all. I'm just talking about painting a simplistic painting of a group of figures to give the impression of a group of figures to give your paintings a sense of life. But there are certain things to keep an eye on, and one of them is the eye level. Now, I know people can be different heights, and if you look at this painting here, you'll see a group of people waiting to buy tickets for the circus. Now, you can see that the children are obviously a different height to the adults, so their heads don't line up. The children's heads are lower. That's what makes them look like children. But if you look at the adults, their heads, not that they line up exactly because they're people at different heights, but they're, they're kind of in a range. So let me try and explain that in a little bit more detail. So if I'm standing here and that's my eye level, all the other people that are standing there, their heads are going to be roughly within a range, if you like. So if they're standing next to me, a shorter person might be there. Their feet will finish at the same level, but their head will be slightly lower than mine. Now this difference here between short people and tall people, that distance becomes less and less. That distance becomes less obvious as they go back into the distance. So for example, if I've got a tall person here, the short person will be here. So that difference is less. Now I come back to the point. If you get the heads roughly at the same height, you'll be right. It's their feet that vary where they finish. Now if you get this wrong, things will look a little bit out of perspective. People won't look the right size something will look out of whack. Even if somebody looks at your painting and they don't know anything about painting, they will feel that there is something wrong. Now let me show you in Photoshop this image of some people in Austria here. And as you can see, the heads all kind of line up within a range, of course, again. But let's take this woman here in particular. We'll take her and we'll copy her and we'll put a little twin next to her, just like that. And you can see the heads line up and, and she looks quite normal. But if I move her down, her whole body down without changing anything else, what happens is it just looks really weird. And the further I move her down, the smaller and smaller she looks because her whole perspective is out of whack. She hasn't changed size. I've just moved her in the picture plane, or in essence, where her head is. If I move her the other way, if I move her up in the picture, she looks really weird there as well. She looks giant or looks like she's floating. But if I move her somewhere else in the picture and I keep her head level 
roughly the same, but I make her bigger, you can see she seems to be closer. And notice how her legs are finishing at different points. The legs are actually coming down where the legs finish, where the legs touch the ground. If I make her smaller, what happens, keeping the head level the same, what happens is it looks like she's going back. It looks like she's further back, but her legs, her feet, are finishing at a different point. They're finishing higher and higher. She will look like she's in perspective. She will look the right size. She will just look like she's near or far. Now, if you look at this snow scene that I painted in Prague, you'll notice that you know, there's very few people here. It's probably too cold for them to be outside. But you'll notice that it works with even a small number of people. You don't have to have a huge number of people. The other thing I want you to notice while we're here looking at this particular painting, have a look at the larger figures in the foreground here. But on the right hand side, we've got those figures in the background. See how their heads pretty much line up? Which is different to the people sitting on the seat because they're sitting, so they're obviously going to be lower. So I'm going to show you a very simple way to create this sense of a group of people in your scene to give your painting a sense of life. If we draw a line roughly where we want the eye level to be or the heads to be, they have to be exact, but roughly. Now let's paint all the bodies first. This can just be a blob like that, okay? But it overlaps, it's roughly where that line is. You can put as many of these little blobs and, and little bits of paint as you like. Some of them smaller, some of them bigger. Now, obviously the bigger the body, the closer it is to you, the viewer. Now notice that when I do these marks, I'm not making them all the same. I'm just dragging my brush down a little bit and some of them are touching, some of them are not. And you can see I make sure that some touch, but there's some gaps between them as well. And, and I'll explain why later. So they're actually the bodies. What we do now is we paint the heads. Now we get a little bit of burnt sienna and we look at these tops here and that'll suggest where we put the heads. Now you can leave a little gap between the head. Whoop, I'll do that again. Between the head and the shoulder or where the top of the body is. And that gives you the sense that there's, there's a collar there. Sometimes I can join like I have there and I just put little heads here and there. And obviously, with the smaller the body, the smaller the head. Then we come in and we paint the legs. Now we don't have to count how many legs there are. They're in, they're in a crowd. People are standing in front of each other and beside each other. We, we don't count the legs. And the important thing in here is that we try and paint this while the body's still wet. So they bleed into each other a little bit. And we just drag this down. Now it has to be long enough. I'll, I'll show you some of the common errors that people make with doing this later. But you've just got to make sure these legs go down far enough. And you just do little quick brush strokes like that. Doesn't have to be two legs. See that? That's like a diamond shape there. Gives you the sense that the legs are together. And we just do that. I forgot that there. And then what we do is to sit them down on the ground. I'm just going to paint a little shadow. Just make all the shadows roughly the same direction and not too steep. So we'll just go out this way. And you don't have to paint perfect reflections of people. They're just little blobs. Obviously long shadows, so it's late afternoon. And we'll just do that. Even that is enough to give you the sense of a crowd of people in a scene. If I want to put a person back here in the distance, well I know it's going to be a small head but the head's going to be roughly there and small body and the legs are going to finish there. And now that little pen person that I drew Look at how they feel like they're in the distance, but they still feel like they're standing on the same ground. Now just here, I'm gonna show you some of the common errors that people make when they're doing this. One of the things they do is they make all these blobs, perfect rectangles, and they make them all the same size, and they make them evenly spaced. Now, the problem with that is that when you paint those, 
change those into people. They're all going to be standing at the same distance. You know, it's, it's fine if it's a line-up in a police station. All right, you all know the drill. You want, you want yeah, a, a bit of connection. You want them to overlap and you want these blobs to be different sizes. So if we you know, make that, that one bigger, for example, and then we, we need to bring, because it's a bigger blob, we need to bring that further down. You can see straight away, as soon as I do that, straight away I've got a sense of people that are closer to me. And the other thing that you might have noticed there is that all the heads are kind of painted straight up and down and that gives you that kind of rigid look. My little plan. You want to give the heads a bit of an angle. Yeah. Not all of them, some of them are obviously straight up because we all stand you know, and, and rest in different ways and our heads are at different angles, etc., etc. So you don't want it to look too stark and rigid with everybody kind of standing there, as I said, with their heads straight up and down. It looks really odd. Now the other error that people make is that they often paint these heads as big round circles and they paint round circles like this. I think little dashes look so much better than, than round circles. Round circles look, uh, they just, they don't read as well to me. You know, they're not too bad, but I wouldn't go overboard with the round circles or the round heads, circles are round, with the round heads. And obviously because they're big, that's the other thing is when you make the head big, I've seen plenty of people when they're doing these exercises, they make the bodies way too small for the head. And, and it just looks a bit freakish. How big should a head be? Well, there is this thing that says there's roughly eight heads in the length of a body, roughly, but I don't want you to measure. I mean, you can if you want, but it's just a visual thing you, you know, when I look at that, I know that roughly it's got to come down to about there. You know, you, ju you just look at it and you get this sense of whether it's the right size or not. The other one is people often make the legs, they might get the head okay and the body okay, but then they give these tiny little legs, which again can also look a bit odd. So and something else that people often do is don't think that just don't fall into this trap where everybody's doing star jumps unless it's an exercise group you're painting you know not not everybody has to have their arms and legs sticking out like this like like they're a scarecrow so the errors the things to avoid and i know in a way i shouldn't be saying this because when i do say them then you then you picture them but the things to avoid be aware of the big heads be aware of the even spacing be aware of the short legs and don't have all the heads lined up perfectly. As a general rule, again, it's not an accurate body measurement or anything, but, but basically, you know, make the legs about the same length as the body, a little bit longer maybe. I guess another way to think about it, if you think of a carrot, you know, just you, as you imagine your standard carrot, you know, kids drawing of the carrot, that's pretty much, you know, a, a person, that kind of ratio it depends on the carrot really, but you know, it's, it's that kind of, that kind of thing. And the other thing you don't want to do, I don't think, not until you're getting into more close-ups, um, paintings, a bit like these two guys sitting in split, but, but we're not talking about that. Again, we're really just getting a sense of the people in the middle distance or the distance in a scene. So don't get caught up in details like shoes and socks and things like that because you don't need them to start off with, but you'll, you'll be there forever. But certainly on something this size, you know, this is, this is, these people are quite small. This, this is a small painting. If you're painting a big picture and the figures are about this big, then you might get into shoes and socks and hands and all of that stuff. I mean, you don't have to, but you can. 
but certainly for something this size, you wouldn't bother doing those things. You, you know, it'll just end up being overworked. So what I suggest you do is have a go at this, draw your line, and then do these little splodges of paint in different colors and make sure again that you've got different kind of distances and overlaps. I guess the word is variety. Make sure you've got that variety of spaces. You can, you can put these people in any scene. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be, you know, a, a street scene. It can be an interior. It, it really doesn't matter. And as soon as you paint something in the background, you're going to suddenly have this fantastic kind of, this isn't obviously a proper picture, but they're going to have this sense of depth and space and place. It's incredible how little you need. This is all you need at this stage. This, this will suffice. This will get you out of trouble. You'll be able to put these people into your scenes. There's one thing that throws all this out the window, and that's if the ground is going uphill or downhill. And what that does is it changes the eye level of everyone. The heads will be all at different heights. But I don't want you to get bogged down with that now. That's not important. This is the first thing for you to do. I know this looks really simple. But in your world, keep it simple for now as a beginner. Flat ground, simple people, different distances. Put them in your street scenes or your interiors. This will work. If you enjoyed that and you got something out of it, and you want more, you can buy my Watercolour for Beginners online course at Sluga Watercolour School. The link is below. Hopefully I'll see you there in school. No uniform required.